thank you for taking time out of your Thursday to join us for um, our inaugural social exchange sessions, thanks to the Digital Ready program. Uh, my name is Jen Murnahan. I have a business called Digital Dandy, and I help small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and corporate clients to build their brand online. Um, I am very um, privileged to also be a digital coach for the Digital Ready program. And since March of this year, I have spoken to over uh, 35, maybe we're hitting 40 businesses. And I am getting the most amazing insight into businesses here in Hobart and seeing where the challenges are where the talent is, where the passions are, and I just get to chat to all these wonderful people, most of who are here, so um, that's a real treat. So this morning, um, so this is our very first one, so let's all have a little round of applause. This is our launch <laughs> session. Um, so the whole purpose of this really is and I, we called it the social exchange sessions for a reason. When it's sessions, because we're going to have more. Um, the exchange part is, I'm very passionate about collaborating. And um, I want this to be a, an exchange of conversation, an exchange of ideas, and an exchange of businesses. So I'm not using the N word today, because it's about collaborating. Not that word, but it kind of is. Um, the social part, obviously, is we're in the business of social media. So the plan is to invite Hobart business, businesses who have a great story to tell with regards to their digital marketing. So we are very lucky to kick off this whole series of events with the beautiful Lucy Gibbon from Luke Design. And I think this is a wonderful opportunity. I don't know how many times people have said to me, so how do you pronounce that shop? I know. <laughs> so officially <laughs> it is... <laughs> look design. Look, it's look. Oh, so it's not look, it's look. look. That's look. Okay, right, we'll test you later. Uh, so Lucy has over 25 years experience in interior design, both commercially and residential. And about four years ago, uh, she felt a natural progression to share her depth of knowledge and experience with a wider audience. So she has disrupted the retail experience in this town, city. And in 2013, uh, Luke was opened. And some of you may remember uh, her tiny shop in South Hobart, uh, which I lovingly overlooked from where I live dangerously so. Uh, in 2016, only three years after the shop opened, and um, very soon after she moved to her current premises on Castro Esplanade, Lucy was awarded uh, Australian Retailer of the Year at the IHA Global Innovations Awards. And this is, yes please, that was only the start. Uh, so the, those awards are the world's leading awards program honoring excellence, business innovation and creative merchandising in home goods retailing. That led her to a trip to Chicago and it was there in March of this year that Lucy won again and this time it was the Martin M. Pegler Award for excellence in visual merchandising. So that's no mean feat. So congratulations. So Lucy, yes, how does a retail store in Hobart, Tasmania get to represent Australia on the world stage? Okay. Well, first of all, it's got nothing to do with being in Hobart. It's about how you present. And I was never based on, I'm from a small place. I've always just been, this is what I want to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. And every other store that was represented in Chicago was exactly the same. It wasn't that they were from a certain place, it was because they were doing what they wanted to do to the best of their ability. So 
we have a, a little bit of a chip on our shoulder that we can't do it here. Just, we can. There is nothing apart from shipping <laughs> that is our problem here at the moment. That's how I feel about it. I did start very small. So I had a chance to sort of ramp up into what I've got now. And do I want to keep going? I'm not sure I do. As in get bigger? I'm not sure I do. This is just fine for now. But I just think we need to concentrate on the fact that our business is, uh, unless you're doing something that's particularly for Tasmania, but your business can translate anywhere. My business could translate anywhere. I presume most people can. That's how I see it. I'm from Tassie and that this is a very small state in a very small market in the world. So to be recognised is fantastic, like humbling and fantastic. But um, there was a small shop from um, Denmark that was represented. There was a sh very small shop from New Zealand represented. So it's, it's a global thing that we're doing and we've, we've all got as much power to be on the stage, like the social media stage, as everyone else. How did you find out about these awards and how did you enter? I, I didn't know about the Chicago Awards. Um, so I entered a competition to um, a retail competition locally, uh, sorry, um, nationally, through Reed Gift Fairs. So in my business, we all go off to our gift fairs every um, quarter and or half year. And there was a competition, enter your store to win, um, um, you know, prize of being the best in Australia. And I thought at the time that was a really good way for my business to get noticed, as in, hands up, here we are. Mm. Um, little did I know that the prize was after that, well, you've actually now won for Australia, you go to Chicago. And that was um, Pollyanna, as in, what? And, you know, it's like, what? And there I am. And there's my sign in the seven and a half acres of home show in Chicago. So, yeah, it, it, it was a big thing, but it was way bigger when I got there, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. I was like, what? Hmm. And on the, the night, this is, sorry, on the night, there's a big awards night, and on the night, so you sit down at the table and they flash all these amazing stores up, like China, um, England, Canada, and then the best online store of the night was Amazon.com. And no one can compare that. And then on the said best retail store, bricks and mortar, look design. So at one point there was look design and Amazon in the same page. Did you get a photo of that? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> Too many shepherds. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah. It was a big thing. It was a big thing. Yeah, it certainly was. Hmm. Um, so we know that Luke has grown exponentially since you started in South Hobart. Hmm. How did social media affect your business growth? Yeah, it's really important. I can't, I, it's really important because it gave me a voice. Not a loud voice, it just gave me a voice. And, but I chose to use it so my voice wasn't... Um, um, oh, how do I put it? It was... Jen hates this word, but I was very authentic about what I did. So I wasn't pretending to be something else. I wasn't pretending to be bigger than I was. I wasn't pretending to sell better things than everyone else. What I was doing was, I was this is why I'm selling this product. And social media made me realise that um, a lot more people could hear my voice. Do we want? Do you want me to talk about why the platforms at this point that I chose or not? Yeah. Okay, so I... Hang on, just before you say that, I do like the word authentic, I just think it's overused. <laughs> so as we're networking here, the authenticity of the whole thing... Collaborating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so because I was very small, and I'm talking... Does anyone remember the shop yeah. in South Hobart? Yeah. 20 square metres. So I had to turn sideways to go to the loo out the back, and um, I had one teeny tiny little computer that held my ridiculously incompetent myob that I didn't know how to use. I was hopeless. But when you start in retail, you've got a lot of hours where you don't know what to do. Just, that's how it is. 
So I decided I'll create social media platforms. I literally knew nothing about them. So 2013, there was nothing except Lucy's Facebook account. Not Look Designs, Lucy's Facebook account. I quickly realised that that had nothing to do with my business. And please take that on board. Your Facebook account has nothing to do with your business account. There's nothing personal. No one knows about my dogs or my partner or anything else on my business account. But I quickly realised that the platforms were doing different things. So I realised that it was Instagram, I could brand my business. So by that I mean how I want to look, how I want to be perceived, who I want to be in my tribe, who, um, who I love to look at, I want them to love to look at me. But I don't want them to buy my stuff, I don't want them to engage really with me. I just want them to know that I'm around and, and I'm, there are things that I like that I would like you to like. So there are a lot of product I put on Instagram that I didn't sell in store, but I never said I sold it in store. So it was about building that platform of branding me. So was it a way of showing your aesthetic, kind of getting people to go through your eyes? and you seeing an aesthetic that really appealed to you Absolutely. so people can understand yeah. Yeah. your style aesthetic. Yeah, uncompromisingly my aesthetic. So if you didn't like it, it totally didn't matter because it wasn't going to affect my sales, it wasn't going to affect any, it was just, this is what I love. And so that started to build. And I had a lot of time on my hands. So I was posting every two hours in the beginning, a photo every two hours. Why didn't you use Pinterest? I did use Pinterest. <laughs> Pinterest is my bank, my bank of photos. Mm. I have private boards that no one can see. So my Pinterest account, I'm often on Pinterest, but I'm often on blogs or something, but I'll blog it, I'll pin it to Pinterest on a private account so you can't see what I'm doing. Because um, once it's on Pinterest, I don't want it to be used by everyone. Mm -hmm. So just going back to Instagram. I had learned very early in Instagram to gain authenticity and to gain leadership, uh, follow a following and to be a leader in what I was doing, I had to stay where the project was, if it was an architectural project, who the interior designer was, who the stylist was, who the photographer was. I was publishing. I wasn't marketing, I was publishing. So I had to credit everyone. It took hours and exhausting and it really paid benefits. It, it grew really quickly because I was, photographers were then sending me stuff, designers were then sending me stuff, architects were saying, can you feature my project? And at that time I had a, about 10,000 followers, which is big, it's huge. And um, I've also never taken any money on Instagram, ever. I've never paid for a followers and I've never taken money to promote a product because it's not, a, for me, my Instagram account's not about promoting a product. So, back to 2013, I'm setting up the shop. Facebook turned out to be an amazing platform for, look what's in store, look what we've come, got coming in store, look at our store, that sort of thing. It was local, totally local. There was no one in Tehran following me from an architectural practice at 12 a.m. at night. It was a mum looking for something for her kid. It was for someone looking for something for their house. I read the analytics. I saw who was looking at it. Don't underestimate the analytics of Facebook or any of the platforms. I saw who when people were on my, Insta, my Facebook. So I tro chose to use Facebook as um, my store. It's, this, is, this is what we have. This is what we're going to have on sale. This is what we like doing. That sort of thing. I don't have a huge following on Facebook. Don't care. Don't care. But as soon as I put something on, it's on sale, guaranteed I'll get 10 people coming in to buy it. So that's working for me. Um, and where, where, did, where would I have done that before? The Mercury? You know, the papers? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's instant when I put it on Facebook. So for me, that's really important. Pinterest is my bank. Facebook is my store, <coughs> Look Design is my brand on Instagram. Yeah. And I remember in the early days, um, you would use 
Facebook is a good customer service portal, so using that messenger facility. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Um, quite often you would you would people, communication. People are happy to use Facebook as a. Can you hold that for me? Can you get that in for me? Can yeah, that's exactly right. It was it's local. It's the store. Yeah. Um, why do you think? Because Instagram clearly has been your strongest channel. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's because of the energy you put into it? Do you think because of your aesthetic? Yeah, or I think so. What do you think it is? I think so. <coughs> Instagram's a funny one to me. I mean, I have a very big following, or I have a lot of followers, but so does a cat dressed in, you know, women's clothing. Do you know what I mean? Like, like... Pugs. Huh? Pugs. Pugs. Yeah. That's, it's like... I'm not, I'm not running my business on a, it. I'm not making money out of it. So I could, I guess, I, I can, but I don't. She's not too. I think it's my, the aesthetic, but the fact that I gave credibility to photos in our industry, that is really important. And you were consistent with that too. Consistently posting, consistently the same image, so as in the look of it. If you scroll through my site, they're similar colours, it's this similar quality, always good images. I would never put a shitty image on um, Instagram. It, you would just scroll through it. Instagram is, the, I think it's the second pop, most popular social media platform. Down here. But in the world, I think it's Facebook is number one, Instagram mm -hmm. is number two. Mm -hmm. Because it's a visual thing. It's easy to look at. There's not spam. There's not a lot of sponsorship slash marketing on it. It's uh, it fits our, it fits our eye that you know it's it's neat. It's t it's easy to scroll through. Everything's square. Everything's perfect. So that photo that you put on has to look sensational. Um, you said that you don't um, <coughs> use Instagram as an engaging tool. No, um, no. I don't. Well, it's interesting because I noticed that a lot of people on Facebook are less inclined to engage than they are on Instagram. Does that bother you, or do you? How do you? What's your strategy? On less engaged. They're less inclined to comment on Facebook than they are on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't. Comp there have been lots of, so, you know, like you're supposed to comment. You're supposed to engage. Like the more you comment about something, the more engagement you get. I'm sure that that's probably true because it was never my mo to do mm. that. So I haven't done it. Um, I don't know, there is something quite, um, you're a little bit more, not, well they're not going to see a photo of you for a start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if some, and on Facebook I think you can track back, oh who are you, and then if you haven't got your privacy settings, they don't, they can find out a lot about you, so maybe that's it, I don't know. I don't think really engage on either, as in making comments. Mm. Which kind of goes against I know. the whole best practice. I don't do a lot of hashtags. That was my next question. Thanks, Segway. Um, I don't do a lot of hashtags. I've had this conversation with people. I've used the same hashtags the whole time. Do you think that because... I'm like the Carl Steph and I begin the same suit for two years. <laughs> and no one's noticed. Until now. Yeah. And now, yeah. Don't know if you don't get unfollowed. That's the other nice thing. <laughs> do, you, do you think because you were... I think you hit Instagram at a really prime time and you built up your, your audience at a time when it was organically easier. Yep. Now algorithms and advertising has changed all that so it is harder to garner um, a larger net. Yep. Um, do you think that perhaps because you have, you have reached a certain level so um, that perhaps the fact that you aren't using the hashtags, does it matter? Hasn't changed. <clears throat> uh, my growth Since the hasn't, beginning. Had, my growth hasn't changed. So um, it's 100% it's, this is the bad news, folks. When I started Instagram, um, it was very easy to gain an audience. If you started tomorrow, it would be, if I started tomorrow, it would be very hard to get up to that level again. I get about a thousand followers a week, hasn't changed for about a year. 
You get a thousand followers a week. But I'm at, at a level where that happens. That's a snowballing global thing. If I post nothing, I did for a week away. I post nothing. Mm -hmm. Didn't change. It just didn't change. So it's just that snowballer. At that level, it's yeah. just that snowballer. It's a different game. It, yeah, yeah. This is a beast now. <laughs> this is a beast I should be earning money from, and I'm not. So technically, at I've got 325,000 followers. Technically, I could ask about 900 to 1,200 dollars a post for from to promote something. Yeah. Choosing not to. Okay. Mm. And that's probably silly business. But it then I guarantee you, as soon as I did that, like, um, Look Design loves this microphone and it's only whatever. I it would just I would just go back down like it would. Because I, I click off people that promote. Yeah. So, business-wise, you could make a lot of money out of Instagram, well, but it, do. I yeah. think it's incredibly hard now to gain a following. So all of these tips I'm going to give you are going to add great value, but it, it's a tough gig to get that many followers now, unless you're Chappelle Corby. <laughs> and that and there is that's pretty much what I'm talking about. So, but that, but, 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 but don't think about it as followers either. It's engaging your tribe. Your tribe might be a hundred thousand people. Get to a level where you're going to go yes, and that's fine. Yeah, I did this experiment in February, where I was at a certain um, number, you know, petty pity very tiny, and I said, right, I'm going to my target, and I am going to do this if I hit a thousand followers. And what I was interested in was just stretching my net out a bit further, but how I could um, increase my engagement, and that was important to me, yeah. particularly because I'm working in a local area. I'm working in Hobart, you know, I don't need to have a split and trillion people, because I'm not going to connect with them, and that's not authentic to me. So I worked my ass off, and I posted twice a day. I was really regimented, I was really consistent. That almost broke me, trying doing everything else. Yeah. But I was determined, so I hit that mark, and I popped champagne for it, because I was so excited by that. I think that's, that's a nice goal. It's yeah, yeah. a great goal. But what's interesting is that when you hit that level, things do start to change. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure that the algorithm rewards you if you hit, there must be points or levels in Instagram, because definitely, but certainly the engagement is so much more powerful than numbers, and we can all be completely obsessed by vanity metrics, which is, you know, how many likes do you have on your page, but um, it's interesting, there's a new um, uh, website where you can add in any Instagram account, and it will um, connect and connect and connect and click through and tell you how many fake followers those people have. So I was um, following this thread the other day where somebody was complaining that her um, image had been copied, and it was copied onto a social media manager's, not me, um, account. And she checked into that person's account, and half of her audience was fake. So, you know, you've got to also remember that people are buying likes uh, just to boost the numbers to make them look good. Don't, um, don't do it. Don't <laughs> ever do it because it's just going to bite you in the end. It's not even that. It um, goes completely back to that being exactly who you are, being authentic about your business. If you believe that you need a certain number of followers to achieve success, that's never going to be... That's not a good business plan, basically. But it's not it's not indicative of what you are as a business either in the fact that you're willing to you it's not a marketing exercise at that point. It's just it's Emperor's new clothes. So just don't do it. <laughs> I just I can't stress that. Then it becomes a distraction and you're not actually yeah, using it. Yeah, I it's just it's such a waste of time. As much as this is a social media gathering, and we're all talking about social media, don't sweat it. Like, mm -hmm. there's a question, there's a, some great questions over there which we'll get to, but it's like, don't sweat it. It's, 
coming from the girl that's got such big numbers on the Instagram, that didn't win me the prize overseas. What, what won the prize overseas was how I was presenting. So that social media was just a platform to get that out. But they weren't. I didn't. They didn't get asked to do it because I had a big Instagram account. I would enter the competition. I had to put photos in. I had to do a lot of work about who I am, what I was selling, why I was selling it, um, my business plans, my financials. There was a lot that went into that. And it was a visual merchandising award. So that wasn't just about social media. So whatever your business is, concentrate on that. Social media just isn't how loud you yell. It's about how well you engage your tribe. And as soon as you start doing that, you'll like your business more too. That's how I feel about it. Can I and just go on that? I could go on for hours about this. I'm not going to be the um, the um, proselytizer of Simon Sinek, but he has a he's a um, a speaker who talks about the why of your business, not what you're selling, but why you're selling it. Now, as soon as I started listening to that TED talk, it completely resonated with me. And as soon as I put a why to my business, not that I am selling beautiful product that from all around the world that's iconic, or none, of it, none of that. As soon as I put a why, why am I doing this? It all clicked into place. My Instagram made more sense. My social media feeds in general made more sense. And my business made more sense. And I know I sound like I'm the foot soldier of this guy, but it was, it, it's a simple, simple um, mind shift. And it's why am I doing this? And it translates to everything about what you're doing in your business. Yeah, I think that's really wise. And, and I often, when I'm working with clients is that we kind of start at the very beginning. Yeah. If you don't have that anchor set, it's really hard to uh, tell your story. Because if you haven't got it set really clearly, yeah. and you've got that um, uh, fire in your belly, you can't translate clearly or, or you know, you can't, you can't translate that passion if, if you haven't yeah. kind of figured out what it is. Yeah. But it changed the way I had what product I bought. It changed the way I presented the product that I bought. It changed the way I presented on social media. So it, it that was transformative for me. Um, but it also means that I don't sweat that oh my god, I haven't got any followers on this and no one liked that photo and why didn't they like that photo? It's like it doesn't matter, I'm just sticking to what I'm doing. Running my own race. I think the beauty of social and looking at data and analysis is if somebody didn't like that photo, you'll know about it and you'll see and go, okay, well, that didn't work. Yeah. Let's move on and let's try something else. Correct. Yeah. So it's really valuable, I think, in that way. Mm -hmm. So rather than looking at it like, oh no, you didn't like what I did, it's like, okay, well that didn't work, let's, and you can, you, yep. you know, you experiment, you tweak until you find your sweet spot. So, mm -hmm. um, can I ask you um, um, to talk a little bit about your brand? Yeah. Because um, I'm a bit of a brand nerd and I love to work with clients um, to really delve into what their brand is aesthetically, um, you know, um, verbally, um, visually, so that you've got, particularly because I'm in the digital marketing space, that we have consistency uh, right across the board. Um, so with your Instagram and also with your Facebook um, content, it's a very clear aesthetic uh, when it comes to what look, look is. Whether it's color, whether it's simplicity, um, it's my logo, my font, my colors of the store are consistent. I consistently brand, I, I needed a logo that would translate very easily and be put on everything. So either as a watermark on a photo or uh, as appearing in a series of photo images, that was really important. So even that subliminal, um, you don't have to see the image, but you kind of see that either my... Um, my logo <laughs> is on everything. 
and I was, but it's simple. It's the simplest of fonts, and it's and it's monochrome. It's it's a little bit me. I mean, I don't wear anything much else but black and white, and I'm not so, thinking that that's different for everyone. Um, but that consistency across all of my platforms and across uh, and in the store was paramount to me, and it, it really was right from the beginning. I wanted to drill down. It's just, look, there's no ephemeral sort of stuff around me. There's nothing. It's about that what I love. And if you don't like it, that was too bad at that point. <laughs> um, but it's worked. <laughs> um, but yeah, it. The way my I, the way I put my photos on Facebook are really simple. I don't fluff around with borders or frames or anything. It's very, very simple. But that's not for everyone either. I'm just, just saying that that's me across my um, platforms. And it was, it's really important to look consistent so that if someone is flicking through a feed, it's like, oof, that must be lock design. It, it has a look about it. And I'm hoping that that's what it does. I think it does. Certainly on my, fa on my actual website, and we haven't even talked about websites yet. Okay. <laughs> websites are equally as important as all of this social media. When you're uh, flicking on Facebook, one of the first things people will do, and nearly all my traffic on my website is from Instagram or Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, because you can, the more analytics, because I use a thing called Squarespace. So, um, I did my own website. And it, you it's can, a website platform, it's a, Yeah, it's just what, a thing that you can do yourself. Not suggesting that that's the best way to go, but it's financially for me, that's all I could afford, me doing it. Um, so that look uh, was exactly had to how my store looked. It had to have a black sort of background. It had to have incredibly intense colour pops of colour. So when you when you scroll through my website, it looks exactly like my store. Having said that too, I um, the biggest investment I made, and it was the most important, and it's what won me the prize, I got a great photographer to take great photos of my store. Or of your product, or even, it's so important that that translates. It's not on an iPhone, it's not like if you if you scroll into it, it's not going to go digitally. You know, it's beautiful photos by someone who saw the store through different eyes than me, which was important too. Um, I was lucky to have a great photographer that did it. But that that consistency of images, consistency of how my store, I was able to use those images on my Facebook, on my website, on my Instagram, and. Everyone knows now what it looks like. And I can also use them to upload for entering competitions, for um, sending someone and um, we need a photo, Lucy, to put in Home Beautiful. Boom, done. That's time saving. It was the best investment I made. Can I ask you how much uh, do you invest in online shopping as a business? As in the, yeah, you have a Shopify mm. platform. I do. Where do your energies go in relation to that versus your bricks and mortar? Mm. There's my Achilles heel, everyone. <laughs> um, I ha you, from a retail store, I have to be online. There, there is no, you, your online store and your bricks and mortar store have to be exactly the same. They're not in my case, and I don't do it well, and um, that's... Coming up. <laughs> um, so, so what would your advice be to someone who was uh, looking at online retail and also had a bricks and mortar store from what you have learnt so far? From what I've learnt so far is that you have to have it. Don't don't ignore it. Don't think that um, I'm not about that. I like retail. I was the, the most arrogant of um, retailers in that. I want them to come in, I want them to have the experience, I want them to feel everything. I was like, horse oh, shit. They want to go online, they want to flick through it. There are two ways, is it called showcasing? Where you can either showcase it in your store or showcase it on your online store. 
reverse showcasing is now happening. So they want to research it online, but they want to come into the store for the experience. So that's what I've now got to take away. That is what I took away from Chicago. There were all these seminars on reverse showcasing. So Amazon has opened a bookstore, a bricks and mortar bookstore in Seattle. They, people will scroll through the Amazon site to look at, but they want to go in for the experience of going into an Amazon bookstore, which is a, totally against their whole um, uh, social media dyma dynamic that they were running. For me, people will search through my store and come in and they'll go, we saw that online or we saw that photo on Instagram or we saw that, can we come and buy it in your store? Absolutely, yes. So now, for me, I thought that there was an arrogance about I don't need to be on an online store because, well, it's very difficult in Hobart. <coughs> we have to ship everything here and then I have to ship it away again. Mm -hmm. And if it's not right, they have to ship it back mm -hmm. and I have to return it for free. Mm -hmm. And it was just that I will make no money. Mm -hmm. um, there are no cheap ways of doing it. I've investigated how to get stuff in and out of Tasmania and it's expensive. So. For me, I've put it in the too hard basket and, like, and ran on the platform of, <laughs> they need to come in here. They need to see it. They need to touch and feel and look. And I'm not sending a $4,000 chair to Melbourne because someone's seen it online. They're not going to buy it. So what you've got to offer them, from my point of view, is a great experience when they come in. So they want to shop with you. They want to say they bought it in store. And I think no matter what you're doing, whether it's retail or whether you're a maker or whether yeah. you're a service provider, it's all about the experience. Absolutely. And from a retail point of view, and it would happen with a maker as well, there is a story behind everything you sell. You cannot translate that on an online store. No one is interested in on an online store about... Uh, where this vase is made, that that's hand blown in Denmark, and that the lady that makes it used to work for George Jensen, and that no one wants, no one cares. I just like it. It's pretty. I'm going to buy it. Done. I love telling the stories, and people like hearing the stories. Is it engagement? Is in person is as important as engagement on social media. It's the same thing. Have you ever looked into trying to tell your story through video? through your digital marketing channels? No. Would you? <clears throat> um, not sure I, it would, not, not sure it needs to happen in my store. That's just personal. Hmm. But um, there are, um, what works for us too are the videos that go with, um, I had this conversation with a guy from Denmark who owned a very big retail store in Denmark. And he used to have videos playing for different things. Like he sold those um, Riddell glasses. Mm -hmm. And Riddell had a beautiful video that played of the making of them. And he'd have that on a screen playing all the time. Yeah, next sure. to them. Yeah. Yep. And I said, Henrik, does that really make a sale? And he goes, maybe not. But it, they stop. And at that point, you've got a, someone to come in and talk to you. And isn't that interesting? And, and they, let, let, let's pick it up. And it, it was just a tool that made people stop. Yeah. So there was a time to jump in. <laughs> so for that, I, for me, not, not for me, but I can see the value of it. Mm. Yeah, well, that's, I think that, that that whole point is grabbing people's attention and making them stop, pause yeah. and observe. That is something that I think we can use yeah. online when, we have, when there is so much content that we need to push through mm. to stop. If it makes sense for your business. Absolutely. Then, uh, yeah. If it makes sense to include it, if it makes, if it adds value, yes. Yeah, all, of those, all of those things have to happen, yeah. Do you think your vision is the same today as it was four years ago? No. What's changed? Um, my vision when I started was um, I wanted to own a store where I had, yeah, okay. I wanted to own a store, this is totally um, personal, where I was sick of going to cocktail parties and dinners and going out with people and they would say, so what do you do? <laughs> and I had to have this elevator pitch because I didn't. Re I did all sorts of things. I was between jobs, I was doing this, I did that. And 
I'm, oh, I'm working really hard on um, a project at the moment. The elevator speech was getting flatter and more rehearsed and, and it, it was ridiculous. And all I wanted was I just wanted to own a nice shop where I could go to work every day, meet nice people and have lovely things around me. And that's exactly what I did. And then I got a bit hungry <laughs> and then I got a bit, oh gosh, isn't that really nice? And then, and so that, then it grew. But my vision now is much more um, about, wow, I've got a really powerful tool here. Yeah. I can do so much more. And then it became, I own a design store. Yeah, that's right. So when I moved out of the little teeny tiny store in South Hobart, I moved into this amazingly beautiful space, not dissimilar to this, on the waterfront in Hobart. And I wanted to not just have a little store. My elevator speech was <laughs> cracking at this point. I had a great store and I wanted it to be a design store. But then the Simon Sinek thing had all clicked in too. I wasn't just doing this to sell product. I was doing it because I wanted to inspire people to have really beautiful things in their lives, to have less things in their life, and to buy once and buy well. And so as soon as that transformed in my head and that translated to the store and what I was selling, I got rid of a lot of brands at that point. Not, I didn't, I had the space, but I drilled down into the brands that were working for me, the brands that I was proudest of carrying, the brands that uh, fit within my brand at this point. So everything changed when I moved into that space. Why do you think that what was it? Was it the culmination of? I oh, I felt really proud of what I'd done. Okay. It was a huge risk. Like I had twenty square meters, two hundred and fifty dollars a week. My rent was. I had no staff, and I went into Salamanca Place, four staff, a point of sale system, three IMAX. <laughs> there was a huge amount of risk, because if that had failed, my elevator pitch was screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but yet you kept your social media presence constant. Constant. And constant. that didn't change. Didn't change at all. My, the look of my brand didn't change. Mm -hmm. Nothing changed across that apart from my transformative thinking. Um, I still had a, the same aesthetic. Everything remained the same, yeah, across all brands, yeah, across all platforms, yeah. Do you post on social media yourself or do you have help yes. now? Yes, no. Now, I know that there's a real temptation, especially when it, you get quite big, to do, I don't even use um, a timing one like Hootsuit or anything. I don't use any Hootsuite. of Hootsuite. See, don't use them. Where you can time um, schedule. Yeah, I don't do that. I would rather say, because if I'm traveling, I'd rather put on Facebook, I'm off to Melbourne or I'm off to Denmark or I'm off to this, and there might be a lag <laughs> where I could keep posting during that time. I like the sense that I know what's happening. I actually do read what people are writing. I actually engage in my own platforms. Mm -hmm. And I have, it's just a personal thing, I have a feeling if I took my hand off the wheel to uh, schedule posts or use, or ask someone else to do it, it's purely a control freak thing at this point, um, I, it wouldn't be me. And I kind of like that it's me still. Hmm. I'm not sure you have time. I know, I don't have kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't have kids. My store is my whole life. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, the majority of time. The questions are on this board here. Uh, a lot of it we've covered. We're going to cover in these um, tips. Can I just say to oh. you, this picture, when I went to um, this Chicago home show, they did a talk about me and the different platforms, and the guy that did it created these images. Oh, I was just going to say, look at you and your Photoshop skills. No, look at look at her, my networking skills. I said, dude, can I have those? And he went, yeah, sure, you can have them. I was like, didn't pay, didn't do anything. He sent me a whole lot of these. Yeah. 
See? See? The power There's of conversation. The power of conversation, yeah. But that is a Photoshop thing. And if you, the, one of the best skills you can teach yourselves for social media is to be good at Photoshop. Seriously, it's uh, using, I use a little app called Pick Play Post too, which puts three or four photos, but they're three or four good photos and or a video. There, there are little apps that you can use for that. that pick get, Play. Pick Play Post. I use it on my Facebook. I don't use it on Instagram. I use it on my Facebook. So it would be like three images of the store or the product from different angles. But I do know Photoshop and that is Photoshop. I didn't do it. <laughs> but Photoshop is really important. Really important. Yeah, that's what I said before. The goal isn't to be the one who shouts the loudest. The goal is to consistently engage with those who have chosen to listen. So, there, it's better for people to listen to you than just be out there shouting loudly and, and getting numbers. It's, if, if people are listening to you, you're going to get your message across far quicker. Yeah. So, my plan on, my plan on Instagram was always just to brand. My plan was um, to have a, an aesthetic that people would relate to me and, and oh, sorry, look design as a brand. So nothing to do with my store per se, although this, I put stories up today. So there is a, a sense of the look design store on Instagram. My Facebook was local. It was about what I sell, who I sell it to, your local, I'm gonna tell you what's in store, what's coming in store. Pinterest, the Pinterest accounts that I have sorry, boards on Pinterest, are uh, once again my aesthetic, but it is my bank, uh, which no one can see. You can have private boards on Pinterest. So if I'm looking at photos on the internet and I love them and I'm going to use them on Instagram, they go on my private Instagram board and I can then go back. That's the beauty of Pinterest. I can go back. Where did I get it from? Who was the photographer? All of that. So at that point I'm publishing. Um, yeah. True. Pretty much intrinsic to it all. Why are you on social media? And that's what I was trying to say. Don't sweat it. Like, it's extremely helpful. But do it because you know what you need to do on it. Not because I've got to be there. I just need to be there. Because it will never make sense to you or to anyone looking at what you do. So, what... This, the social media platform that is best featured for me, to, for my target audience, is Instagram because of the, um, um, the, the images and the way it's presented. But for a, a lot of people, it will be Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, don't underestimate the web page too. I have seen sensational Instagram accounts, sensational Facebook accounts, and then click to their website, and it's a dodgy little one-page landing thing where it's like, well, you're not taking yourself seriously, are you? And so, because websites are the hardest, I think, to do, to capture who you are and to, to give yourself credence on, as a business. But don't not do one. <laughs> don't not have one. So just invest some money in that. Post consistently. Can't stress this enough. Um, let's click down. Um, post consistently being at, at times as well, not just what you're doing, it comes after this, but find out what, who your target is. Who do you want to be targeting to? If you have product that you think a mum or would like to buy, you're not going to be posting at 6pm at night or 5pm at night or... or um, school drop off time. You're not going to do it. If you post it at 4 pm or 3 o'clock when they're sitting in the car waiting to pick up kids, not a bad time. <laughs> but look at the analytics on Facebook and see when they're going on and looking at your profile. When do you get more likes? If you put a photo up, don't think about it. Oh, I've got lots of likes. Why did you get likes at that? Was it the time? Was it the photo? Think about things like that. 3 pm, 5 pm, and 9 pm for mums. 
first thing in the morning to so breakfast, um, sitting in the car, uh, soccer practice, and yes, yeah, Saturday morning soccer, um, and uh, nine and ten o'clock when you're having wine. <laughs> Guaranteed, you get a lot of likes. Guaranteed. <laughs> also um, Friday night if you're on, if you want to be an online shopper. Yeah. Target market. The, um, this point here, understand the optimum type of post to receive the best engagement. That's an interesting one because you remember on on Instagram about was it six months ago they produced a new way that you could put more than one photo up in one post so you can scroll right left to get more. I started doing that. Completely didn't my my tribe hated it. Where I get about three or four thousand likes for a photo, got eight hundred maybe wow. six hundred. They couldn't be bothered, they were happy to go this way, couldn't be bothered swapping left. Whereas in another business, they'd be, it'd be yeah. genius. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Um, thing on The Cool Hunter is a really huge Instagram account. They post um, little uh, GIFs or, or videos. They're their biggest, thing, biggest platform are these really cool videos or GIFs that they do. Mm -hmm. Put a photo up, and it, and it, people are waiting for the whatever they're going to known for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a, a quote sometimes, a really good quote can get you a lot of engagement. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. There's no, yeah, be consistent across all. I wouldn't put your logo over everything. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the look of it needs to be consistent. The quality of images, can't stress it enough. Don't put fuzzy photos on anything. You, it, it looks, it's disrespectful to the audience and it just looks lazy. So put good photos up. Uh, yeah, we'll get <coughs> copyright. This is a really big one. Um, because I put the name of the photographer and the project, I get respect, but occasionally I'll get really narky letters and emails from a photographer. How dare you use this? Here's my bill for 600 euros for using it. It's like, no worries, dude, I'll take it down. Those 300,000 people don't need to see your photo. So they're not taking my <coughs> that, that I've actually credited them. They actually want payment for the fact that it's on Instagram and it's on here. It was on Pinterest, mate. Like, I can't control that. So there are, I do respect copyright a lot. I, having said that, I opened a second Instagram account just because I have got so much time. Um, that I don't do it, but then I'm not doing it for about product. I'm doing it because I needed a release. It's exhausting trying to find a photographer for every photo. Mm. So the other, my other one is look design style, which is just about the clothes that I like to wear and, and having funny. Uh, I take the other one quite seriously, the look design Instagram. I don't do jokes. I don't do um, funny quotes. So I needed an outlet. Because I'm hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and it needed that outlet. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah, this is, what I was gonna, this is what I was getting at too. Don't feel the need to share, <laughs> please. Your personal Facebook account can do all of that. If you've got a view about your business and part of your business um, uh, authenticity is about we believe in this, totally fine. If it's relevant to your business, totally fine. I put a post up on my big Instagram account when that um, terrible thing happened in um, France, the Balacan thing, the, the big one. And it was one of those things where, you know, I don't remember, was it we put different colours on a thing or it was something. I think it was a peace sign maybe with the French flag or the Eiffel Tower, something like that. I got so much engagement that I had to take it down because the engagement was negative. The engagement was like, what about the Muslims here and what about this and what about that? I was like, oh my goodness me, I did not ask for this. Pandora's box. And it was totally off brand for me to mm. do it. Why did I do it? Because I felt the need do it on my own personal stuff, didn't have to happen. And maybe I would have got unfollowed, I don't really care at that point, but it was just like, this is not the engagement that I want. Mm -hmm. 
So be careful about what you place. Don't just tell people that it's, um, I can't come into work today because I've got to take the kids. If your shop can still open, <laughs> they don't need to know that. So whatever. Yeah, is it relative to your audience? So yeah, the Eiffel Tower thing was not, I thought it was pertinent, but not, it wasn't. Yeah. This is a, this will come across like I'm paranoid and I'm not. This is just an exercise that be aware of who your competition is. What are they doing? What are they doing right? What are they doing wrong in your eyes? Who are they following and who follows them? It doesn't mean you have to stalk their followers. That's happened to me before where um, uh, a, a company took my um, all my followers, uh, not even take them, they looked at all my followers and approached all my followers, which is a big feat, it was like 20,000 at that point, and emailed all of them to follow them. Now they were emailing my 12 year old niece at this wow. point, and I was like, mm, probably not a good exercise. <laughs> so I'd never do any of that, but it, it was an interesting exercise, because like quite clever marketing. I wouldn't do it, but I, I didn't approach them, but I, I do look at who my um, other retailers, who's following them and why are they following them. So which, that's of interest. Yeah, that's all important. Um, not only just look at them, but actually start working out. I mean, don't just go, oh, I've got 50,000 people here. 50% of my, on my Instagram, the, I think you can only look at analytics if you're a business page. That's right. So um, if it's a personal page, you're going to, how do I know? How do I know? Well, turn it into a business page at that point or start a new business page. 50% um, of my followers are female. So I'm not doing anything particularly female oriented or male oriented, it's obviously because it's 50-50. Mm. Um, the majority of my followers are from Europe and um, uh, Asia. So um, I thought, oh, well, I'll start posting, you know, projects in India and Tehran and so it made no difference. So they're not, that was just, it was good to read it, but it doesn't make that much difference from what I posted. But the time did. So I don't even bother posting in the middle of the day now. No one sees it. So at night time and first thing in the morning, I have to admit, I'm on, I'm on social media, so this is because I don't have kids. I'm on for about two and a half hours in the morning, about four and a half hours at night, every day. Sorry. <laughs> but I can pull that back. But it's all relatable to your business. It's, yeah. it's your choice. It's my choice. Oh, thank you. And it, it is. I totally get it that you actually do have a life. And I work around <laughs> that. But I don't. I don't have kids. I work in my store. So I, can, I do have a lot of time behind the counter that I can do that sort of thing. So, yeah. So I think that's really important that you know, what you put in, you're going to get out, but it has to be realistic to your other responsibilities and your mental health yeah. um, and all of those things. So it works for you, that model yeah. works for you. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's what is going to work for everyone. Correct. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, the power of analytics, um, it's just going to tell you for free whether you're doing it, you're doing it right. Final slide, Miss? First one, create a value proposition. It's pretty much that the why behind your business that I that I touched on before. Um, it's about why do you want what do you, what are you expecting out of social media? Is it followers? Is it like it? Is it are you going to market something on there? Just work out why you're doing it. And as soon as you can do that sort of logical. Um, step in your head, then I think it will all become a little bit clearer. I know that we've all got to be on it. And, um, just 
step back and say, why am I on it? And what do I hope to achieve out of it? And what do I hope to achieve from each platform out of it? You had a really, um, you said something really interesting that resonated recently. Um, and it was talking about uh, the choice of content that you put on versus, you know, don't be a junk dealer. You remember that? Yeah. It was about, yeah, I think, doesn't that come up after in one of my things? But that one, that think like a publisher, not a marketer, that's a really good one. Because mm -hmm. at, at that point, the way you present the photos, what the content that you write, um, it doesn't always have to be funny. As much as that's a temptation to be funny, um, it doesn't always have to be. It could be a story. It could have a personal resonance. Like the reason I sell this product is as I found it in... Denmark on this small alley, what you know, like it, it could have some resonance. Um, people just don't. I, I do get annoyed by the constant requirement to be like a jokester on social media. It doesn't have to happen. Like it's fun to be um, humorous, but the whole the that the boomerang thing that you can have on Instagram, mm -hmm. I use it a fair bit. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be like, oh, Lucy's drinking, Lucy's drinking, Lucy's drinking, that sort of thing. I would never put that on. And I've seen quite professional people do that. I was like, stop. Stop oh, no. doing that. Certainly on, there seems to be a little bit of a license on Instagram stories I've seen for people to, when you... When you the can... stories especially, yeah, the guard comes down. Yeah, yeah. If, if, you know, we've got this behind the scenes brand personality kind of appearance on, on Instagram. Mm. But it seems that stories is like this little gateway to, to show a little bit more. And some people are doing the oversharing thing. And I have, I know there was one um, influencer that I was following. I was so disappointed when she started in her stories. I'm like, oh, dude, I don't like you anymore. No, isn't it? It's like every three and seconds she was showing her bloody dog. No offense to dog off, owners. No, but, but it's oh. off brand at that point. Yeah. As, as much as it's only there for 24 hours, like a Snapchat type scenario, <laughs> It's if it's off brand, don't do it. Like you yes, you might be funny and hilarious, and uh, here's me, you know, getting ready for my evening, and I'm settling down with the wine, and it's like that's great. You could do a beautiful still shot of a really great glass of red wine and um, fire in the background or whatever. Like that's my brand. There's no what if there were things posted about me on Instagram at a party. It's like nah. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Don't do it. So everything still has to be on brand. You, but I'm not saying don't be funny. I'm just saying just be careful about what you post. So don't post when you've had a few glasses of wine. Don't post when you're cranky. Don't don't post when you're cranky. Yeah. Yeah. Or when you're tired, yeah, which exactly. is most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Focus. Yeah. yeah. Just keep the filter on. Yeah. This is it. Be a yeah. content leader, not, not a, a junk, junk dealer. dealer. Yeah, it's a good one. That is going to be memed everywhere. Yeah, it's a really good one. And that's what we were just talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's the summary. It really is what where I'm coming from, though. Like, prolific creator of relevant and entertaining. Like, if you're going to do it a lot, do it really well. If you, don't, if you don't have the time to do it, still do it really well. So not prolific, but be relevant. So, and entertaining, not hilarious, just entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we think, oh, I haven't posted today. Well, if you haven't posted today, you haven't posted for a reason. Correct. And if you haven't got it planned, you haven't planned it for a reason, and that's okay. You don't put up stuff just for the sake of putting it up. Correct. And that's actually, you know, that is substandard quality, just, just, don't put that up and wait and, and have that content Great advice. planned and ready. And, uh, From a girl who posted every two hours at one point, this was like a drug. So there was that, as soon as I, stood, I pulled back, I pulled back because I had to, you know, I probably had to do something in my life. And um, so there was a day, there was 24 hours when I didn't post anything. It was like an addiction. Mm -hmm. it can be. And then, but then I said, well, hang on, I actually don't have anything. And I've gotten through Pinterest and there's nothing to post and I just don't know what to do. I didn't post anything and it didn't matter. <laughs> it was guess fine. What? Nobody yeah. noticed. No, correct. Like, you think that everyone is looking at you? They're not. They're glimpsing at you. So don't think that everyone's like, where's Lucy's post? 
They're not. I thought. She normally posts at this time. No, and there are other people who do though. No, they're not. There are people who do. They send me. 